Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and this is I Am Love the Church. Hey, everybody. Hope everything's going well with you. I don't know if y'all seen the last video. Thought I'd, I watched my videos after I finish them. Um, I watched it today because. I didn't watch it right after because it was so long, uh, but I just finished it. The last part was pretty intense, wasn't it? Yeah, it probably wasn't a lot of Holy Spirit in that. Um, you know, sometimes I feel like, man, I should take that down, God. <laughs> but I mean, I felt like he's like, no, keep it. So... I kind of want to just go into that, start off with that a little bit and just say, I mean, I just imagine, you know, I didn't grow up with a dad and I don't know if you know how it is. Uh, if you don't, it's basically, you know, a dad is supposed to set the rules. Fathers, y'all fathers out there, you're supposed to set the rules. You're supposed to be the moral code in the house. And... If it's not the father, then hopefully it was your mother. And if it's not the mother, well, hopefully it's somebody, grandparents or something. And if you didn't have a dad like I didn't have and a mother who had no moral compass, then where do you find it? Where do you get it? You get it from, I guess, anywhere you can, right? Whether it's cartoons or movies or, you know, friends. So when I look at this world, I think to myself, we live like there's no God. We live like we have no father or no moral compass. So everyone does whatever they want. That's the world that we live in. We may act like we know what right and wrong is, but we really don't. We don't. We don't live like we have a moral compass anymore, or I don't know if we ever even had one. So everyone just runs around doing whatever they want and hurting each other's feelings for all various kinds of reasons. Lying, cheating, stealing, you know what I mean? Backstabbing each other, all this stuff. Everyone's crying out, somebody help me. You know, there's no justice in the world. We look to the government to help us. You know, we look to everything else. But the one thing we don't look to is God. And when God does send somebody, like a pastor or a prophet, you know, when he does send people to these regions, there are people who are grateful and they go, oh, thank you, Lord. But the majority of the world, they're not. They don't care. They care when wrong is done to them, but they don't care when wrong is done to others and is done all around them. As long as it's not happening to them, they're chill. <sighs> Until it happens to them. We live in that kind of world. We're all children. I don't care. If you're an old man or woman, you're still a child. I've seen some really horrible old people. <laughs> not just seen like being like, they look very not appealing to look at. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about their way that they treat people. And those are the examples set before us. And this is what I'm getting at. Our values are wrong, are totally wrong. When we look at the Bible, when we look at the Holy Bible, what does it tell us to do? It tells us to love God and love people and to take care of the world. When I look at the world, we're not taking care of, we're not loving God. We're not loving each other, and we're not taking care of the earth. We actually hate God 
we put him on the end of like, he's not even existent. Nobody likes talking about God. It's like the last subject anyone wants to talk about. And the next thing, which is supposed to be loving people, people, it's like the greatest thing that we do not do is like we despise and hate one another. We step all over each other and talk bad about one another behind or in front of each other's backs. And we definitely don't take care of the world. I mean, look around. Pollution just, you know. So we the the th- the three things that we're supposed to do when God said to Adam, take care of the world. With Eve, he said, take care of the world. The three things, love God, love people, and take care of the world. We don't do that. On the list of things to do, that is on the bottom of our list. What do we do first? He says, whatever's on the top of the list, that's what we do. So what's on the top of each and every one of your lists? If it's not loving God, getting to know him through his word, going to church and and praising him and doing what he wants. If those aren't the priority of your desires and then loving one another and then trying to fix the world, if those three things aren't at the top and it starts off with God first, God prayer and then everything else with church and all that works in the place, down the list, loving your spouse and loving your kids. If it's not God, then if there's something else in that place and everything else will be distorted. If God isn't the primary thing that you love, because if you love God, he's saying, you love me, then you will love people. And then you would want to take care of the world. And then you will love your wife and you will love your kids. But if I am not number one, then this is the world that you say is acceptable. You love video games above everything. The first thing you think about is just video games. The Bible describes that as evil. Do you love yourself and your beauty or your money or your possessions above everything is the first thing you think of? The American dream First off, America was founded on the Holy Bible. It was a nation that was going to say, we're going to put God first above everything. And we did. We used to. But now we wonder why our world's falling apart. America is not founded on the founded, meaning the foundation Before you build a house, you have to find a good foundation. You have to find a solid foundation. You don't build your house on sand or the water. You build your house on land, on a rock. So when the storms come and the wind blows, right? Three little pigs. You don't build your house with straw. You build your house with bricks. And that's what our country is supposed to represent. That's what our homes are supposed to represent. That's who us as people are supposed to represent. Godliness. We don't represent that no more because our foundation is messed up. And our foundation is our desires. Each and every one of us, what do we desire? What's on the top of your list when you wake up in the morning? Is it to pray and read your Bible or to do other things? That dictates the world that we live in. If it's not God and reading the Bible, the Holy Bible, only one Bible, then we should not be surprised or even complain about the world that we live in. We should be all happy. Check this out. I work, I'm a cashier. 
And I watch people come in and out every day of the store. We should be the most exciting, you know, because if it's because we're saying whatever our God is, is what we find our joy in. Whatever's on the top of our list. I'm saying the top of my list is God. And every day I have a reason to celebrate, to be happy. What's at the top of your list? That's what makes me happy. That's what makes me want to get up. That's what makes me motivated. That's what gives me hope and healing and joy. So if that's mine, and I'm not saying you have to be like me. I'm just saying question what, what, you, what your life is. If your life isn't happy, then what's at the top of your list? And for those of you who claim that you're Christian, you say that you're Christian and you're not happy because God says, those who actually put me on the top of their list, they will have my peace. They will have my joy. They will have my character. And they will have my desires. They will desire what I desire. They will no longer desire what they desire. Love is peace, patience, love, kindness. It does not envy. It does not boast. It's long-suffering. They will have all these things, the nine fruits of the Spirit, because I am at the top of their priorities every day. They read and pray. They read and pray to me. But those of you who don't put God at the top, and you wonder why your life is so miserable, I see people so miserable every day. They're so miserable and then they treat everyone so badly. And they blame everybody and hate everything. They don't take care of their brothers and their sisters or their neighbors or the people in their own household. They talk bad about one another. They don't take care of the world or even their own house. They definitely don't love God. So what's at the top of their list? The whatever's at the top of your list flows from there. If, how do I describe this? I'm trying to do it. Whatever, whatever is at the top of your list is what flows out. So if there's water on top of a, you know, a mountain and the water seems down the mountain, that's what that's what happens. I'm trying to I'm trying my best. If there's you know a bunch of dead bones on the top of the mountain and you like push it over or whatever or flows down, that's what flows through your entire life. Whatever whatever's at the top, that's what flows through your entire life. So if you don't have peace, joy, love and kindness and all this stuff, or if alcohol is at the top of your mountain, the top of your priorities, or drugs, or money, and all this stuff, and you still are not happy, well, guess what? That's what you worship. And until God becomes your primary source of happiness, your life will be completely chaos. Our nation will be completely chaos. And it is. We live in a chaotic world. People never question their own, their own list, their own desires. My life is so miserable. You're rich. Or you thought that would bring you happiness, didn't you? Having a lot of money. You thought your car, your possessions, or your outward beauty would bring you happiness, and it didn't. Huh. Gotcha. And you're looking at someone who's a real believer, real Christian, and you're going like, how are they so happy? How are they so peaceful? How, how are they this way? It doesn't make any sense. And they're like this every day. They don't have a reason except glorifying God to be happy. Makes no sense. I have all the possessions I, I've ever wanted. I have everything I needed. And God says, unless you find me, 
you will never be happy. You'll never find peace. But the moment that someone tries to come into your life and, and bring you into this relationship with Jesus, you go, I don't want that. I don't want to change my ways. I don't want to let go of my possessions. I don't want to put God first and pray and read the Bible. I don't want to do those things. I'll just watch you do it. Maybe if I watch enough sermons, I'll feel good about myself. And it's like, you wonder why your whole life sucks. You got no friends. It's not even about having friends. Sometimes you guys worship your friends. You don't even worship God. God is simply saying, unless I become number one, you will never be happy. Ever. <laughs> That's pretty intense. That's pretty serious. Wow. So I, I know I've been jumping around that one for a while, but what I am saying is this. We should all be happy in the world that we live in, considering that we have control over that list. You and I have control over what we put first in, on the top of our list. So the rest of our life should make sense. The way we perceive the world should make sense. Y'all should be walking around happy, like, yeah, you know, I got my list. It's everything is in that order. That's the way I want it. I should be, you should be happy the way your life is. You should be happy the way the world is. You should be. People should be, right? No, they're not. Why? They're actually miserable. They're walking around like, this is terrible. But they never question their list. They never question their priorities. The first thing they get up in the morning, what do they do? What do they do throughout the day? And here I come with the gospel of Jesus. Yeah, your list's all messed up. And they're just like, what? How? First off, you're not putting God first. No, no, don't mess with my list. I ain't going to church. I ain't going to do all this stuff. No, I'm done with that. I don't want to. No, I ain't changing my list. I like alcohol. I like all this stuff that I do. I like porn and all that stuff. I want to, No, I ain't got to change my list. I just got to get rid of you. And they live their life and continue to live misery and gets worse. And you're just standing here just waiting for him. God's just waiting for you to come to him, just being like, finally surrender your list, surrender your priorities, surrender your life, put him first. Ah, it's pretty sad. Our nation, the greatest, supposed to be the greatest nation, was founded on the Bible. And when we look at America, we're so far from God. What is America's priorities? What are our priorities? What is the thing that we glorify the most? When you turn on the TV, what do you see the most? When you turn on a radio station, what do you see the most? Who, who gets the most exposure in this world? And God says, that's what you worship. That's what America is. Because I don't get that exposure. People, and I got a YouTube channel, dude. People are, maybe it's always been this way. I don't know. But I can only speak for my generation because this is the generation that God decided to create me in. And you, for a time such as this, we were made. People would do anything for attention these days now. It doesn't even matter how wrong it is. I mean, I saw this thing. Some people were they were going into stores and they were opening up ice cream, ice cream, and they were licking the top of it and closing it. I mean, come on. People were eating like soap detergent, doing, I mean, anything. People don't even care about morality anymore. They have no moral compass because they have no father. 
If you have a father, you don't do those things. Because fatherless people do those things. And I don't mean a physical father. I mean a heavenly father. Because a physical father, when he turns his back, you're going to do those things. But a spiritual father who you believe watches you all the time. You're not going to do those things when nobody's watching you. Because you know somebody is watching you. And that's what America does not have. It doesn't have a spiritual father, an eternal, loving, all-knowing, powerful father. We have one. We just don't believe we have one. Or we don't want him to be our father. So guess who is our father? The one without rules. People say, oh, you don't love me because you don't allow me to do whatever I want. No, because I love you, I don't allow you to do whatever you want. I don't want you to do whatever you want because not everything you do is beneficial. Not everything offered in this life is beneficial. There are some things that will hurt you. There's a lot of things that will hurt you if you don't know the difference between right and wrong. And just because you're ignorant to what that is doesn't mean that you're not breaking the rules. It means that you're ignorant and unaware, whether it's by choice, which I think everything is by choice. <clears throat> These are some hard subjects. I mean, the fact that I'm even talking about all this stuff, I know I'm going to be at people that are not going to like me. But guess what? Just because you don't like me doesn't mean it's wrong. A father is supposed to set the ground rules. I'm not here to be your friend. And true friends, they look out for one another. A bad friend does not. Man, my life's all messed up and da-da-da-da-da. What am I supposed to say? Oh, just keep doing what you're doing. It'll get better. You're a good guy when they're not, when they're not a good person, when they're not doing the right thing. I'm going to sit down with you and talk to you like a father is going to talk to you. You're not doing what's right. Son, daughter, you're lying, you're stealing, you're cheating, you're lusting. This is not a good living. It's bad living. Unless you get your act together. Humble yourself. Your life is going to get worse. You think I like talking about this stuff? You think it makes me feel good about myself? You're wrong. You don't think I want friends. You know how you get friends? You do whatever they want you to do, including if it's being doing the wrong thing. Just like everybody else in the world, they don't even care about doing the right thing anymore. All they care about is is the attention that it, they can get. So-and-so thought it was funny. So, you know, must be good because it makes you smile, right? Even though it was totally foolish. You can find joy without being a fool. You don't have to be a fool to find joy. That's why he gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit. He says, you'll find real joy when you do the right thing. I will anoint you with joy. I'll anoint you with real laughs and things that are really funny, not things that are condescendingly funny. We live in a world full, filled with children with no rules. That's why our world is the way it is. And it's that way because... Our foundation is messed up. Our list is messed up. Our priorities, our values are messed up. God isn't first. Loving people definitely isn't second. And taking care of the world is not the third thing. The, the first thing is to take care of ourselves. So we were, we're the position where God belongs. We put ourselves there. 
So now we're there. And guess what's below everything else? Our spouse, our kids, below us. As long as I eat first, then my wife can eat, then my kids can eat, then the rest of the world can eat. That's the America that we live in now. You make a lot of money. And the first thing you think about is yourself. Let me go get me a brand new house. Let me go get me a brand new car. Let me go get me a brand new gun. Let me go get me something for me. If it ain't enough about me, 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 myself, and I, my, me, 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 me. Meanwhile, your brothers and your sisters are laying out in the street with no home. Kids in foster care. This is the America that we live in. I had a gentleman, not a gentleman, first off. This guy came to my store and just started talking about, let's just say, because I don't know if he's going to watch this or not. <laughs> let's just say he just started talking about like stuff that 18-year-olds talk about. He's old, really old. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, those are your values? That's what you put at the top of your list? And I'm just like, it's just sad because it's not even just him. It was just a lot of guys I've talked to. They're just like, their priorities is, is their nice stuff, their, their stuff, their cars, their house, their, their, their status and all this stuff. I mean, we raise our kids to go, you should be a famous football player. You should be a famous baseball, uh, baseball or basketball player or musician, you know? We raise our kids to be this way. I'm just talking about America. We raise our kids to become like this. I mean, there's shows for crying out loud. I mean... Uh, the voice. I mean, their shows that just glorify like people trying to be famous. Now the YouTubers are all famous for some stupid reason. When we have people who are starving on the street, we have no homes. Our vet, the veterans, there's people with mental problems. Our veterans don't even have a home when they come back or whatever. Like, those are our priorities. Kim Kardashian, all these new, you know, and, and we look around and we teach our kids this. And we say, here, this, this needs to be glorified. You need to be put first. And we do this by, by living this way ourselves. We look after our own estate. We look after ourselves. We don't care about one another. Do we really need another Michael Jordan, another famous athlete who makes millions of dollars? Millions of dollars. Look at these actors and actresses. They're making all this money in the world. They have big mansions. Huge. I mean, come on. And, and you look down the street. This people, kids on the street. And we say that's 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 good. We don't even pay attention to that. Those aren't even our priorities. Could you imagine like if everyone's priority was like, man, I just got this really high paying job. Man, I'm not gonna even buy a truck. That's stupid. I don't wanna buy a truck. I wanna rescue kids from, from foster care. I want to adopt a child. That's my goals. Yeah. If everyone in America did that, there would be no homeless children. There would be no foster care children. There would be no kids without a home, a loving home. We don't do that. No, we buy ourselves a gun. We buy ourselves stuff for us. Oh, I'm going to get a new car. I'm going to buy some more marijuana. I'm going to go do some more alcohol. I can't wait to party this weekend, you know. We look after ourselves. Now, the Bible is all about self-sacrifice. I can't change the world and convince everybody to do the right thing. They have to choose to do the right thing. But what I can do 
is offer you a message to get you to question your life. I can't rescue every person, but you never know who's going to hear this message. I wish I could, man, start a homeless shelter. I wish I could have all the money to take care of all the kids. I could. Maybe you can. Those are my priorities. I prayed to God. He was like, Jeremy, give me your desires. I'm like, I want to be a famous director. As if there's not enough movies yet. Thousands, millions of dollars to becoming these things, to having these things. <clears throat> I'm like, okay, what, what are your desires, God? And this is what the burden that he gives me. There are people with drug problems that I care about. There are homeless people. Those are my people, and I care about them. They're like sheep without a shepherd. The fatherless children. The widows. When you start to surrender your life to God, you start to surrender everything that this world tells you that you should chase after. And you start to develop the habits and responsibilities of a father. Because Satan only cares about himself and he teaches us to only care about ourselves. But God cares about each and every one of us. As you look at your car every time or whatever you possess, your gun, and, or, or your status, your position. You worship things that can't hear. I see already people don't even care about their own kids. They worship these things. They have no life in them. They can do nothing unless you touch it. And they become like them. Don't touch my computer. Don't, don't do this. Don't, this is my stuff. Stuff. It ha Those are more valuable to us than actual people. Someone, someone scratches your car. You're going to, you're going to hurt that person. That person has emotions. That person is real. They have feelings. They're a real person. They were a baby at one point, and then they're a grown person. They have, and you're going to hurt that person because of your, your car that doesn't actually have emotions got scratched. We live in a business culture, man. America is dead. It's a business. And even the churches are turning out to be this way. I'm so ashamed to be American. I supposedly fought for this country and its values, but its values are terrible. America! It's like you're really saying... Praise Jesus. That's what we're supposed to be. America was founded on the Bible. I mean, it was founded on the Bible. The Bible's about Jesus. But now I go and I'm like, if I say Jesus, man, I wouldn't get, people would just stone me. But they'll be quick to go, America. <laughs> oh, gosh. This is horrible, man. I don't know. I like, what are your values, God? And this is what he shows me. It's not this. It's not possessions. We're, we have the most debt where we keep buying cars and vehicles. I mean, it's like I look at the statistics and it's like one person, it says 1% of the American population has more money than basically in the entire world. 
one percent. That's like one person has. There's a hundred bananas and there's a hundred people. One person has ninety nine bananas, and the one banana that that one person doesn't have has to be, has to be split between the rest of the ninety nine. That's insane. There are more houses than there are homeless people. That's insane. Rich people and athletes are making more money than entire cities, entire towns. That's insane. And we look at that and we go, two plus two equals one billion quadrillion dollars that belongs to this person. And we glorify and lift this person up. It's just insane. And I used to be this way. I used to worship those things. And I, now I see it. I'm just like, wow. It's like a bunch of kids with no father. People with, with no father. And God's, that's, God, that's what God cares about. He cares about us. Each and every one of us, God cares about us. When we look at that cross, that's what Jesus died for. I look at my kids the other night. They have all that they need. And they're just playing. And I'm just sitting there, just laying on the couch, watching them and just smiling. <clears throat> and I felt like Moses at the time. I love the movie, The Prince of Egypt. <laughs> Moses was... He just said, God said to Moses, he said, I want to bring all of my children into a house like this. Where they'll have food and clothing on their backs. When it's cold, they'll have warmth. When it's hot, they'll have coolness. They'll have everything they need. And you look at Pharaoh, he had more than he needed. And we look at the politicians and the famous people of this world, they have more than what they need. It's the same thing. Maybe you have more than what you need. America is dead but God is alive. Everything's a business now. Babysitters used to just be free. Oh, watch my kids real quick. Sure, yeah. Now it's a business. The other day I was asking some kids, so I was like, hey, like, you wanna make a, you wanna make a film? I just wanna just hang out basically and make a film. How much are you gonna pay us? Okay, go ahead, go along your way. They're like, America, freedom, we're not free. I don't know if we've ever even been free. <laughs> Shoot, man. I, we don't even have our own veterans. We don't care about anyone but ourselves. I don't know if I can keep doing this right now. I don't know where I gotta go over my time. I'm just sad. I didn't want to see it. I thought I wanted to see it. It's like, God, show me more truth. Show me more of you. <laughs> I'm like, I, I don't know what to do. He just said, preach this message, that's it. Everything's a business, man. It's all about money. I 
I don't approve of Dave Ramsey, personally. I don't. <clears throat> when I read the Bible, what does God say? It's his, this is God's word. He says, don't worship this world. Don't make plans for tomorrow. Multiple times. People are trying to build their salvation in this world. I mean, if you're in the town that I live in or you're, you're in this town, I mean, look at Battle Mountain. Big old house right there, right next door is Trailer Park. Anyways, it's just like, and it's us. It's us. It's our hearts. I mean, Apple. Look at Apple. It's a, it's a computer and phone company. Yes, I'm using this to record and stuff, and I appreciate them. All this money goes into our entertainment. Little to no money goes into the real problems we have. If we don't teach our kids about God, who will? Kicking God out of the school systems, kicking him out of the government. And everyone runs around like a maniac doing whatever they want. And when injustice happens, there isn't any. Crying out loud, I mean, I, I would imagine that this would be the, 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 the pinnacle of the end times. I don't know. I'm not a prophecy person and all that stuff. I know the revelation and stuff. But I would say the pinnacle would be, I mean, they've proved gay marriage and all that stuff. Not good, first off. <clears throat> the pinnacle will be when it will be legal for an adult to have a relationship with a child that is in a sexual way. That's my personal belief. It just came to me for some reason. God will, that'll be the, that's the end for me. I think that's when God will come back. <clears throat> We're already doing it with a lot of unjust things that the Bible says is horrible. It's horrible. We're live. We're, we're not doing a lot of right things. Now gay marriage is approved and who knows what else evil people are going to try to approve. Oh yes, kids too. I mean, I've seen pictures. I don't know if they're real, but I can imagine. I mean, there's like marches and I don't even want to talk about it. It's so terrible. <clears throat> but I there's some kids dressing up like trannies already. It's just like, the fuck, man? Like, it's... And parents going like, yeah. And I'm just like, it's terrible, man. Our values are messed up because God is not on top of it. It doesn't mean he's not relevant. It means that when that day comes, we're going to regret it. Maybe if I just live my life according to God, somebody will hear this message. Somebody will turn their lives around. I'll be a spark in the forest. And hopefully the whole forest sets on fire. When people realize and they repent of their sin, they turn to God. This world is dying every day. It is. You and I are dying every day. Don't follow the patterns of this world. Don't seek after anything in it. Live every day like it's your last. Learn 
and discover and, have, and build a relationship with Jesus. He came to bring a new kingdom because he's not trying to fix this world. It's already broken. He's trying to shepherd us into the one that's going to come. An eternal kingdom that has, is not like this. And that's the one that we're preparing for. So do not set your treasures here on earth. Every day we're on preparation to, to leave this world anytime, whether Jesus comes back anytime, he will come back, but when, or when we die, and that could be any day, 12 seconds, every 12 seconds someone dies in the United States. People are trying to fix this world without God. It will never happen. It will never happen. He's the only one who could fix it. But nobody wants him. Most people don't want him. So that's the message. Sell everything. Get rid of every all the, the idols you have. Everything. Throw it in the trash. Throw everything away, everything that's an idol, everything you run to, everything you seek after, then you don't seek after Jesus. That's an idol. Everything you glorify, you don't glorify Jesus. It's an idol. Get rid of everything. It's not about retiring. The American dream is like, I want to retire and then live a secure life and die. No. Because you will die and Jesus will say to you on the last day, oh, you lived your life all for yourself, looking after your own, while people were on the street lost and confused and they needed your help and you, you never helped them. And even if you did, you didn't preach the gospel to them. You didn't prepare them for eternal life. You just had your little nest and you allowed certain people in that nest. The American dream is a fantasy. Like fantasy football. I never play fantasy football. I don't even know what that is. I just hear about it. I just imagine it's a fantasy. The life to come is not. This world is a fantasy. It's a dream. It's not real. Don't live your life for this temporary world. Jesus says, unless to go into the kingdom of heaven is to forsake this world. That's what he's saying. If you want to go to heaven, you have to leave everything that this world has to offer you. I don't even know if this message is going to be good, but I'm going to release it anyways. Well, that's that's pretty much it. I think if I go over 15 minutes, I got like two minutes left, less than two minutes. It'll be too long. Oh, look at that. That's time. <laughs> it's time. Joy's in the window, seal. Seal, I don't know, whatever. Save who you can. Preach the gospel. Who Follow the spirit. Love as much people as you can. Don't love this world. Love God, love this people and get ready for judgment. God bless.